Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am preparing a travel palette that I will be using at the creative meeting that will be held here in Turin next June 18th, organized by myself and two dear artist friends that are Laura Raduazzo and Eleonora Serra. Um, the protagonist of uh, this uh, meeting will be watercolor and I am preparing my dedicated and curated palette, especially for this uh, special meeting here in Turin. I have bought this uh, small uh, tin for 12 colors, but I know by experience that I can fit up to 20 colors, half pans, uh, in this uh, kit. So I have uh, prepared them here. I will swatch them with you and then I will fill my palette. Stay with me. Let's start with yellows. My first yellow is uh, by Rembrandt and is Naples Yellow Deep. I find that I like uh, Naples, a little small dot. I find that I like uh, Naples yellow deep better than uh, Naples yellow because it's slightly more earthy and I can use it in sky as well. This is slightly opaque because as you see there is some white inside. It's uh, made with PBR24, an earthy yellow. PY53 and PW6, which is titanium white. So it's a very warm yellow and I use it for sky, for buildings and just to give an overall sunny look. So this is by Rembrandt. Then one more color by Rembrandt and it's my favorite primary yellow, which is Orlin. Usually Oreolin is PY 151, but uh, Rembrandt uses one PY 150, which is uh, nickel azo yellow. But I find it a uh, wonderful primary yellow. It's uh, brownish in mass tone. I will add some. It's very transparent. Uh, it's perfect for glazing. Look, look how beautiful it is in Maston. Orlin has become my favorite uh, yellow. I'm always using as a primary yellow. And uh, it's a great addition to my palette. Then I have a warm uh, orange yellow, which is Indian yellow. I have chosen not to put lemon yellow because um, I don't use it that much. So I have uh, used other yellows instead. And this is Indian yellow, very warm, almost orangey yellow by Schminke. And Schminke is never disappointing. Look how transparent it is, how warm. This is great for sunsets, for instance, or also as a mixing yellow, but wonderful orange pyrrole orange it's my favorite orange and this is by my mary the pigment is po71 i have also a very nice version by schminke but they all beautiful there is not much difference across brands and it's a very warm Um, orange. I prefer it much, much more over cadmium orange, which is opaque. This is very transparent. And uh, this is by My Mary. I always buy tubes. I never buy pans uh, so that um, I can refill it. It's uh, much more budget friendly to buy tubes 
it costs more the moment you buy them but then it lasts i don't know three four times than a half pants so i always buy tubes and then i have a lizarin crimson okay i'm using real the genuine alizarin crimson which is pr83 but uh, be careful because uh, as i have already explained explained in a previous video this is a very fugitive uh, pigment as i will be using this palette for urban sketching mm, the problem doesn't really exist because uh, it will be in a sketchbook but if you think that you might sell or hang your watercolor paintings stay away from this uh, pigment look uh, how lovely it is i like it very very much that's why i use it despite the fact that it is not light fast because i like this uh, color but uh, there are light fast alternatives and i have explained this uh, in a previous video i will put the link in the notes below the video then i have potter's pink and my version is uh, by schminke oops i put too much but uh, it's not a problem because potter's pink is very weak schminke always i find it difficult to put the cap back on but uh, potter's pink is a lovely muted pink it's an earthy pink i love earthy colors you can notice by my palette it's quite weak now i have put a lot so maybe you don't see how weak it is but uh, it's great for buildings and it's great as a mixing touch uh, for instance if you mix it with the naples yellow you get uh, the perfect color for italian buildings also for pottery or florals is very nice i use it more for urban sketching because i don't paint many flowers i'd love to just don't don't it's not my cup of tea then i have cobalt blue we go to the blue and I have a Windsor and Newton version. Okay, uh, I don't use cobalt blue that much except some touches in sky. Uh, so I always ask myself, why am I putting it in my palette? First of all, this version by um, Windsor and Newton is very vibrant and beautiful. Cobalt blue can be also very dull, depends very much on the, on the brand. There are some colors like, I don't know, dioxazine violet that are dioxazine purple that are the same across brands, but cobalt blue can be very different. Wow, oh, this has a lovely granulation. And uh, I think, I put it because first of all I like this Windsor and Newton version and then I think that you must have a uh, cobalt blue in your palette because when you need it it must be there so there is not a professional palette without uh, cobalt blue so although I use it rarely I use it uh, mostly in sky for some touches uh, I like to have it it reassures me then we go to my favorite blue for skies and it is a daniel smith it's a manganese blue hue it's a hue because the original pigment i think is not manufactured any longer but oh, oh disaster it's too full you know what i'm already filling my half pen because too full and uh, I will put some color in the corners with a toothpick okay this some binder separation unfortunately but um, this color is made with P B15 which is Tallow blue 
and I'm not sure you can see how beautiful it is in camera because it's not a color that comes out very well in camera but um, it's it's really wonderful for sky it's my favorite uh, there is no um, comparison with the cerulean blue I'm not a fan of cerulean but if you like cerulean and if you don't have this manganese blue who you can um, replace it with either phthalo blue or um, cerulean but uh, this is meant for sky basically for sky now we go to ultramarine ultramarine i have this uh, schminke the 100 tube and um, it is different from my usual ultramarine it's the first time i swatch it because uh, usually my ultramarines are always pb29 and this has a touch of tallow and you can see that it has a touch of tallow let's check if it uh, affects the granulation and if we still like it i hope so because i have this very large tube still granulating and i think that um, I like this addition because the problem with the ultramarine is that often I find that mixes with ultramarine are a bit dull. Probably this tallow makes them more vibrant and transparent. But um, it's granulating. Then we go to a must have, which is indigo. Indigo, why is indigo a must have? Because with indigo you can make wonderful darks. And also I need it because when I put uh, people in my sketches, I mostly let them wear jeans. And uh, jeans, I make them with, with indigo. This indigo by Winsor & Newton is probably one of my favorites so far. I have not tried all the indigos in the world, but um, I love the value variation from very dark, almost black value to this um, much lighter transparent value. And this is made with uh, coal black, PV19 cobalt violet and uh, PB15 phthalo blue. Let's go to cobalt turquoise light. Cobalt turquoise light, for me, it's absolutely compulsory with this pigment, PG50, because not only it's very beautiful, but, but it is also opaque. So if, for instance, um, if I need to paint a fountain, um, I know that I can draw and paint the fountain and then add the water over the fountain and uh, it will be there because it's so opaque of course you can water it down and have a transparent effect but it is very opaque when it must on i'll show you for instance this is um, a square in turin that i painted plein air and I just added um, water on top and uh, this was a very quick sketch uh, sitting uh, on a bench but uh, you see that they work very well the addition of turquoise um, cobalt turquoise by Winsor & Newton after thought then we go to a big classic of uh, open air palette which is um, sap green by Winsor and Newton and uh, this is a color that uh, I really use a lot sap green for trees and you can add blue and you can add brown or yellow and you change the color it's a great base you can also use it as it is because it's beautiful just beautiful as it is but you can desaturate it a little if you prefer with some red you put some yellow and you have some yellow green or you can darken it so it's very very universal green i use it a lot i like it very much and then 
I have another convenience screen which I have uh, wanted for a long time and it is under C green by Daniel Smith and uh, Daniel Smith and it is the first time I tried so I'm a bit uh, uh, excited about that I've seen it uh, on YouTube uh, videos and I liked it a lot it's a darker green but it's uh, muted maybe I could have put a viridian as a mixing base for a change because probably this is a, a color that I can reach just by mixing my paint because it has uh, ultramarine blue burnt uh, quinacridone burnt orange and uh, nickel azo yellow colors that I have but I like to have uh, such a nice convenience green in my palette so I can vary my greens without uh, becoming crazy and look at how beautiful it is it's uh, granulating like crazy because the, the ultramarine is really helping the granulation it's wonderful i wish i had bought it earlier then i have a must have for mixing which is quinacridone gold quinacridone gold is one of my favorite colors you can use it as a primary yellows as well let's see that now that i have aureoline maybe i could pick one of the two because you don't really need them both but i like them so much that um, having 20 half pants i think that uh, why not have them both and look at how beautiful it is now i have to dogs to golden retrievers and if you have golden retrievers and you want to draw them in your sketches you need to have quinacridone gold so if you have a golden retriever go out and buy a tube of quinacridone gold and uh, the mixes that it uh, makes with the uh, blues and reds uh, are wonderful greens wonderful oranges it's a gorgeous gorgeous color then i have uh, the first of my earthy yellows, which is Rosienna. Rosienna by Schminke. Now, I have uh, decided to put uh, Rosienna instead of a yellow ochre. And this is done with a PBR7, which is um, natural iron oxide, and PY43, which is yellow ochre. And um, why have I put burnt sienna instead of yellow ochre because basically it's much more transparent uh, yellow ochre is so opaque that uh, sometimes i just don't like the effect and the mixes it makes uh, whereas raw sienna is wonderful in skies in buildings on the ground uh, really can replace yellow ochre with a much more transparent effect so you can glaze it as well beautiful this uh, raw sienna by schminke now, Raw Sienna by Winsor & Newton, uh, this one. You see, there are two uh, schools of thought about Raw Sienna. And um, most brands will have uh, Raw Sienna with PBR7, natural iron oxide, whereas um, Winsor & Newton uses uh, red iron oxide, which is PR101, uh, treated in a transparent manner because it can be opaque as well. And the result is this wonderful orangey burnt sienna, which I really like very, very much. I'll put some more. Yeah. And um, this is a color that I keep buying and buying again because I think that that is one of the most beautiful in my palette and the ones that I use the most for the type of uh, 
objects and things that I paint, for instance, for food illustrations. I like food illustrations very much. This is wonderful. Then I have a new introduction, which is Venetian red. And um, I have used Indian red so far, which is slightly colder. And this is also done with PR 101, sick pigment, but opaque. Why am I using this uh, paint if I already have burnt sienna? Because this is a perfect brick color. So if I have uh, bricks uh, or uh, roofs, uh, I can just vary the value and the hue, adding some purple, some yellow, but um, for urban sketching, you really need a brick color. And look at that, beautiful. Hmm? Then I have burnt amber, burnt amber is must have because I make uh, a lot of darks with burnt amber. For instance, you can make very dark, dark if you mix burnt amber and indigo, almost a black. And this is by Schminke, voila. And uh, it is a classic burnt amber with uh, PBR7, but Schminke has a Schminke has a wonderful, wonderful concentration. They are always so pigmented, so rich, so professional. Look at this burnt amber. It is perfect, the perfect burnt amber. Then I have the only Sennelier in this collection, but I have many Sennelier at home that I like a lot. But this is a color that I really haven't found a replacement and it is warm sepia. Um, some color separation, wait. I go inside with a stick. Okay. And I use the color on the stick. Because sepia usually it's not so warm, this is warmer and it's perfect when diluted for uh, pavement or um, roofs, but I use it a lot for shadow also, for splatters on streets. And it has a warmer undertone that I have not found in any other sepia. And this is made with PBR7 and uh, which is natural iron oxide, like a burnt amber, and uh, um, carbon black, PBK7. And then I have a black, which is not compulsory, but I like this black, which is by Rembrandt. It's um, oxide black, oxide black, because it is heavily granulating, and you can get wonderful mixes just by adding a touch of this uh, black and you get uh, granulating paint with a lot of color separation. They have a whole range Rembrandt with this black uh, oxide, but if you buy this tube, you can experiment and mix it. Look at the granulation, that's wonderful. So this is uh, mixing black. I would use it small touches to darken uh, my values and to obtain a granulating new color. So we let this dry and then we come back, but I will fill my half pans. I will speed that up, of course. So now I'll show you my process. I will use a, need a palette, some kitchen paper, my empty half pans, my tin and my tubes. I have prepared a small swatch card of the same size of the lid with exactly in the same order 
of my swatch so that I will know exactly what is where I can't go wrong because it is in tubes otherwise once I finish a color I will not know what it is so I will keep this religiously and I will have the same information here inside the tin so I start with the, the first which is Naples yellow I will show it and then I will speed it up so it's Rembrandt this one so what I do it depends on the consistency of the paint some paints are very liquid and just need to be squeezed like this one this is very liquid and just be careful to push it in the corners I never push it too much because I don't like uh, if they're too full they will contaminate the neighbors so just some more and that's it and then I will just tap it on the table press some bubbles and I can use it to speak to um, to take them away or my palette and then I rinse it and it's ready okay now I show you just uh, Aurelin had some uh, color separation so if I want I can mix it uh, with a toothpick or with the palette uh, knife like this so that I get rid of the color separation this is very liquid so I don't need it to tap on the table See you later. okay it's perfect now with a lot of uh, dirt in my hands uh, i had to wash my hands uh, two or three times uh, in between i have filled my travel palette with 20 colors um, 
and uh, I have chosen the colors that I use for urban sketching. I will put the list in the notes. Mm, these are the colors. You see there are three yellows, one orange, two reds, not many reds, but I don't use red very much. Um, four blue, um, cobalt turquoise is in between blue and green, so then we have uh, two convenience green. I could have taken maybe out uh, orange put a viridian, but I like this orange so much that I left it. Then I have uh, a bit exaggerated with earthy colors, but I like them so much. So I have put uh, one, two earthy yellows. If you consider Naples yellow and earthy yellows, it's three earthy yellows. Then burn sienna, Venetian red two browns and a black. Of course, everyone personalizes its palette according to their own taste. This is good for me, but I was happy to show you the process. The last thing is that now I will leave this paint to dry for a couple of days with the lid open. Maybe I will put a piece of paper on top so it won't get dusty. Then I will swatch my colors when they dry in this small swatch card. So I'll put it here and I know exactly what is where. I have these as a reference for brands so I can always know what brands I put here. This beautiful burnt sienna, for instance, was that from Schmink or Winsor & Newton? So I will always know. I want to buy these again what I can buy okay so well, I hope uh, you have uh, enjoyed this video it was just for fun and uh, if you like my videos don't hesitate to like and subscribe that's all for now and uh, ciao from Elisabetta here in Italy ciao